This next example is one in which we're going to attempt to prove the identity by uh, combining two fractions uh, by adding them, uh, which will require us to make a common denominator in order to do that. Uh, so I begin by, uh, when I combine two fractions, I take this denominator and I multiply it across to the opposite fraction's numerator. I take this one, multiply it across to the opposite numerator, and then of course we're going to multiply the two denominators together. So let's write that, see what it looks like. We've got 1 plus cosine x plus 1 minus cosine x divided by, now we're going to multiply these together, so that's a FOIL problem, 1 plus cosine x minus cosine x minus cosine squared x. Okay, now we can do some like terms, and in the numerator, I've got some like terms that add to zero. Same thing in the denominator, some like terms add to zero. So the result in the numerator is two. The denominator is one minus cosine squared. Okay, 1 minus cosine squared, uh, I recognize that, that's something. 1 minus cosine squared, if I'm going to take this Pythagorean identity, subtract the cosine squared across, okay, 1 minus cosine squared would be equal to sine squared. So this is the same as 2 divided by sine squared x. Now, we know then that sine has a reciprocal. The reciprocal of sine, so 1 over sine, is simply cosecant. Well, if it was sine squared, it would simply be cosecant squared. So that's the last step, is to use a reciprocal identity. This is the same as 2, and we bring this up as its reciprocal, 2 cosecant squared x. That's what we're trying to prove. The next example is actually a rather easy example in regards to how many steps that there are to, to solve it. Uh, I have this one here though because I like to show that sometimes um, when I work on, on the left hand side, so I'm trying to make this side look like this one over here, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll look at part of the answer and the answer has a cosine squared in it, okay? meaning that I probably do not want to change the cosine squared that I already have. Instead, I'm going to work on this term right here. And notice that my answer does not have a sine squared in it, so I need to replace this sine squared with something else. And again, anytime I see trig functions that are squared, they typically always lead me into this direction using a Pythagorean identity. Um, sine squared we just saw it on the last problem, actually. Um, sine squared is the same as 1 minus cosine squared. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Sine squared right here is 1 minus cosine squared. We're using alphas this time. Minus this other term is cosine squared alpha. These two are now like terms. So it's 1 and 1, I combine them to 1 minus 2 cosine squared alpha, and that's what we're after. Yeah, but again, it, it involved just kind of a, a different strategy, I haven't talked about it yet, and, and that I looked at the answer that I wanted first, and that kind of led me into to how to attack this, what to keep, what to change. In this next example, you can see that the problems already start. You know, each side of the equation are, are pretty similar uh, to each other already. Um, so really, the side that you work on is probably not going to matter here at all. Um, I'm going to go ahead again just work on the left, as that's pretty standard practice. I'm going to try and make this side look like this side. And the way I do it in this particular problem, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by a conjugate pair of the denominator, 1 minus sine beta. 
Okay. What's going to happen now when I foil the denominators together is I'm going to create a sine squared. And if I create a sine squared, that's going to lead me to a Pythagorean uh, identity for a substitution. Uh, so up in the numerator, let's say the numerator I'm going to leave as it is. I'm not going to distribute up in the numerator. In the denominator, I'm going to go ahead and, and foil, but I'm going to just kind of shortcut it. I'm going to take out some of the simplifying, at least writing it down, because we've seen it a few times already. Uh, 1 times 1 is 1. Uh, notice that the outside product and the inside product we've seen before, it's going to be a negative sign, a positive sign, and they're going to add to 0 and cancel out. So I'm just going to grab the last term to the last term. It's a negative sine squared beta. And so again, I've got a sine squared that leads me to a Pythagorean identity. Uh, 1 minus sine squared would be equal to cosine squared. So this becomes cosine beta times 1 minus sine beta over cosine squared beta. Okay, one more step, we'll finish this. It's just a matter of reducing the fraction. Cosine beta divided by cosine squared, I can take one of those out on top and bottom of the fraction, leaving me with the numerator of one minus sine beta divided by cosine beta. And that's what we're after. Um, I use this rationalizing technique uh, oftentimes when I see a denominator that is a binomial, okay, a denominator that has two terms, and they're not squares. If, if they're both squares like they were after I foiled, well then that leads to a Pythagorean identity. So, so doing this rationalizing step creates that Pythagorean identity for me. In this next example, we see another opportunity where we can combine two fractions um, by adding them with a common denominator. Okay, uh, So let's just begin right there. And again, the way I do it is this denominator comes across and multiplies, this one multiplies, and then they're going to multiply together as well to make the common denominator. So I've got sine t times sine t, that is sine squared t plus, here's the plus between the fractions, now I want 1 plus cosine times 1 plus cosine. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it without rewriting it, but I'm going to do this like a FOIL problem. Okay, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times cosine is cosine, cosine times 1 is another cosine, cosine times cosine is cosine squared divided by, uh, for the time being, I'm going to leave it as just sine t times 1 plus cosine t. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to want to foil that, so for the time being, I'm just going to not foil it, uh, or not foil, but if I multiply it, I might have to find out later that I need to uh, factor, so I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. Um, now, up in the numerator, I'm going to kind of skip some steps, but uh, just I'm going to highlight them here with different color. Um, up in the numerator, I see a sine squared plus a cosine squared. Now, I know they're not right next to each other, but they don't have to be right next to each other. Uh, a sine squared plus a cosine squared is equal to 1. Okay, so this term and this term can be changed to 1. Okay, well that allows me to um, combine like terms and, and combine maybe more than was originally there. The 1's combine, the cosines combine, and the numerator of this problem becomes 2 plus 2 cosine t. Denominator I'm going to continue to leave as it is. Um, 
Now in the numerator, notice there are some common factors. There's a common factor of two in each of these terms. Let's go ahead and go this way. So two taken out leaves one plus cosine t. Hey, and now look where we're at and, and what has happened. And, and you see now why I suspected possibly not to multiply these together. So now I've got a 1 plus cosine t and a 1 plus cosine t that can now cancel out of this problem. So we're left with 2 divided by sine t. And we've seen it already in these notes, but here it is again just to remind um, dividing by sine is the same as cosecant, as they are reciprocals. So essentially I can bring this up here uh, if we write it as its reciprocal. This is the same as 2 cosecant t. That's what we were trying to prove.